Yes, hello everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Shahar Khan from Michigan. Um, I want to discuss with you what the patients have been talking about lately, the Khan procedure. This is how I do it differently compared to all the other surgeons uh, who are uh, explanting. If you go to 10 different explant specialists, you're probably going to get 10 different answers. And I want to go ahead and explain to you how I do it and how I strongly believe 20 years from now, this is the only and the best way it the explant uh, will be done. Number one, I don't use drains. Uh, I have not used drains on almost 100% of my patients with saline implants and only with ruptured silicone have I used where there is free floating silicone. Last year, I used only three, uh, on three patients' drains uh, where the free floating silicone was present as soon as I made incision. And the, I have not used uh, drains at all this year. Number two, uh, I do not do lifts. I find it is integral that when I do the surgery where majority of the times the implants are below the muscle, that commitment, the slow meticulous tedious dissection allows for the skin along with the breast to recoil such that the need for the lift is not there. Number three, a hundred percent of the time I send the capsules off to pathology so the pathologist can look into and make sure there is no uh, lymphoma, which is the breast implant associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, CD30 analysis, rule of breast cancer, or any, or any abnormal pathology. Number four, I always take cultures from the right chest and also the left chest for aerobic, anaerobic, and fungal cultures. I find that is integral to uh, analyzing and making sure there is no bacteria that are associated with the implant. Number five, I always give the implants back to the patients. Uh, it is important for the patient to see that the implants were done correctly, i.e. they were removed correctly from the body and that they're very much intact and what the composition of the implant is, if it was ruptured or not. Uh, number six, I always do what is twilight anesthesia, which is deep sedation. The patient is not paralyzed and this is what I would say very safe and very effective anesthesia such that the patient can get the surgery done very safely without having the risks of clot among other uh, problems. Last but not least I take pictures not only of the implant and the capsules on the table but more importantly of the chest wall itself showing that the entirety of the implant plus the capsule was removed such that there is no residual capsule remaining behind what I have said is the 100 100 zero rule, which basically means that 100% of the time, 100% of the capsule must be removed with 0% of the capsule remaining behind. Also, last but not least, I say this to all my patients, regardless of their comorbidities, that I do the same surgery on the young, healthy 26-year-old that I would offer the 81-year-old, such that she gets the same benefit of the surgery, which is 100% of the implant and capsule removed as one system, preferably in the end block method, and that there is no residual capsule remaining behind because this is where the bounce back for the patient lies and the good health and the symptoms that the patient is going to be free of, the many symptoms of breast implant illness that we know of. Hopefully you found this informative. This is Dr. Khan from Executive Plastic Surgery. Thank you.